there, or folks, this is Beth, your sweet urban living lady. And maybe you have a question so that some of my customers and clients and, and viewers have had of whether or not you can reuse your tincture bottles. And if so, how? How do you clean them? So I have some old tincture bottles, some where I've made homemade herbal remedy or some others where I have a bottle and it's a store-bought label. And so I want to go through the process of how to get the labels off and how to clean your bottles. Now you can use this method when, if you're buying bottles from um, Amazon or your local herb shop or wherever you get your bottles, you wanna use this step as well. But when you're cleaning already used bottles, you gotta be careful, um, like this particular one right here, I probably won't reuse the stopper because it's got something on it and it feels like it might be cracked underneath. And then I have this one where I'm gonna see how clean I can get it, but see how it's got the, the herb is in the bottom. And so I'm gonna go through this process of first peeling off my labels if I can. And we want to do that by hand. And I've been searching for some really good labels that easily peel off. Um, I have old office labels and I have them galore. Oh my gosh, my mom loved office supplies. When we cleaned out her home office, it was crazy how many um, office supplies she had. So yeah, that one's not coming off. And this one, a different kind of label, it's not coming off. And yeah, this one's not coming off really either. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna take my bottles and I'm gonna fill them with warm water on the inside. And then I'm gonna take and put them in warm water to soak. I'm gonna put some suds and things like that in it. Okay, so I have my bottles that I have filled with warm water on the inside. We want to make sure we have the lids on the bottles when we put them in the water because we don't want the paper that we are trying to get off to go inside the bottle, right? So we're just going to get that nice and sudsy. And we're gonna let that sit for at least five minutes. And I have some new bottles um, and a new dropper for that one that I think I'm gonna replace that when we get to the next step and we're actually cleaning the inside of the bottle, I will add those. In the meantime, I had the most incredible thought. Now, I don't know about you, but of course I wash my fruit on my veggies when I get home from the grocery store, anything that I buy from the grocery store that we don't grow in our garden. And if you will notice, these are some little, um, what they call cuties. And my husband and I love cuties and the little mandarin oranges. They're easy snacks that, you know, they have their own carry case because the peel is enclosed and you don't have to worry about them. You can grab them and go. They go uh, great in a, to go lunch or something like that. Uh, Rob carries them, Mr. Sweet carries them in his lunch box. They're great. However, look at them. When we go to this, now these are mandarins, not cuties. So these are larger. So I don't want you to look at it and go, oh, of course there are different sizes. When I went to the store, it is not the season for these ar uh, little oranges and tangerines. But if you notice, you can see that it just looks brute. And I'm not talking about just from being in the basket. Look at this one. See how shriveled it is? And some of these are getting this way just, just a couple of days. Just a couple of days they're getting like that. So I decided what I would do is I've washed them. I've washed them um, and let them start drying. And what I'm going to do now is I love colloidal silver. Now, a lot of people make their own colloidal silver. I like the Nature Sunshine colloidal silver. It uses nanoparticles of silver. And so I feel like I can use this with confidence, not, you know, not feeling like I'm gonna use too much. And I use it all the time when I'm cleaning my fruits and veggies. 
And one of the things we started doing is we keep colloidal silver. Silver Shield is the main brand by Nature Sunshine. And we keep it in this spray bottle. And I mean, I just spritz it. If I need to uh, clean my counters or something, um, because it's antiviral, antiseptic, it cleans the bacteria, it's all those things. And a lot of times we just, we'll use just vinegar on our countertops to clean them. Um, if we feel like it, they need to be cleaned up really good, but I use colloidal silver and I use it wisely because it's more expensive than vinegar for one thing, but oh my goodness, we use it when I make guacamole and when I make the guacamole, it's just Mr. Sweet and me at the house now. So unless we're having a party or something like that, we don't go through it. And I like to make a lot at one time, right? So my husband can't stand it. Mr. Sweet does not like brown guac guacamole. So we take this and spray it on before we put leftovers in the refrigerator. And when he pulls it out the next day, it hasn't turned that yucky brown. It might've turned a little less green, but not that yucky brown. And so he'll still eat the guac. So yay, Mr. Sweet. I decided that what I'm going to do is I am going to spritz these before I put them. I'm going to let them, I'm going to let the air dry these little tangerines or mandarins. That's what they are. I don't know what happened to regular tangerines. I'm just going to let them dry with the silver shield sitting on them. And of course, this is just going to have to be a once, you know, uh, when we come back. But this has happened whether we get the mandarin size or the cutie size. Them getting old and shriveled in just a matter of days has been happening for quite a while. We've been throwing away way too much fruit and I can't stand it. If you're, a, um, you know, if you have a larger family and they go through the, through the fruit really fast, then that's one thing. But this, this is like, no, I can't, I can't have my fruit going bad. So we're just gonna see how this works. We're, I know it's not a true scientific test because we didn't start them at the same time. I don't have a control group, but I, I can at least see um, how well they do. We'll report back on that in a few days. All right, so this has been soaking here for about five or six minutes. And let's see, I'm just gonna use my nails here to get the paper off. That's coming off pretty nicely there. It's coming off pretty good. That was a pretty big label. Let's see how this did. And another thing you can do, yeah, this one's coming off pretty good. Um, another thing you can do is, if this doesn't take it off, you can create your own little gooey getaway, get off my bottle by using a, a like essential oil. Orange and lemon are great for removing um, yuck, grime, and things like that. Let me tell you a story about a girl named Boo. We live in a pretty old house. Uh, the house was built, I think, in 1949. And when they remodeled this house, I think it was back in the... 60s or 70s, whenever, maybe 50s, whenever pink and blue tile in the bathroom was really popular. It was before the avocado and burnt orange stage of the 70s, so it must have been the 60s or 50s. They remodeled the bathroom, and we had this blue tub and pink tile, and we bought the house, you know, we didn't build it. We bought it, it was used, as they would say. And I scrubbed that bathtub. It had, so we had like old pipes, iron pipes. I scrubbed that bathtub probably like day in, day out, week after week, and the stains would never come off. And when my daughter got older and we started getting more and more into essential oils and she she discovered a recipe online of using baking soda, vinegar, and lemon essential oil, just leaving it and letting it sit and do the work. And I was at work and she was home that day 
and she sent me a picture of a bathtub and I'm like, whose bathtub is that? She's like, it's ours. The baking soda, vinegar. Um, oh, she also added dishwashing liquid, dishwashing liquid and lemon essential oil just left, you know, kind of rubbed in, but left to sit and work. Got those stains that I had been trying. I have tried the, is it CLR? I had tried all kinds of stuff to get those off. So they wouldn't come off. Okay. So I've got most of this off now, which is cool. A little bit, oh, still there. So that's what I'm saying. If I have a little bit left, what I can do is I can use essential oil to get the, less, the rest of the sticky off. Alrighty, so some of my labels are still sticking pretty, pretty badly and not the goo underneath isn't coming off as much as I would like. So I'm going to, I still have my bottles sealed. They'll still warm water on the inside. Um, and I'm now going to take, and there's just, this is just, I'm making this up as I go. I'm just gonna put like a tablespoon of baking, um, baking soda and I don't know how much. This is vinegar. I got it at Sam's Club. It's just distilled white vinegar. And for cleaning jobs, that is great. So I'm going to add a little bit of vinegar. We're gonna get a little chemical reaction there. Yeah. And we already had a little bit of sudsy water. Now you can use lemon, you can use orange. Anything that has D-limonene as one of the chemical constituents of your essential oil will work. Um, I just, orange was in front. I don't have them alphabetized. <laughs> it just happened to be in front. Now in my case, I have an uh, essential oil case. It is alphabetized, but I've been using this a lot lately. So now I'm going to let these just sit here in this with some vinegar baking soda, a little bit of suds from my dishwasher soap and my orange essential oil. We're going to leave that for about five minutes and we'll check back and see if we can get this, um, the sticky off. Okay. So during the five minutes, something came up and I let the time pass. And so the water got a little cold. And so the labels are a little sticky. So I'm going to take this water. I'm going to drain it. I'm going to make this use warm water again. Okay, so I have these scrubbers. This is Scotch Bright scrubber that's for scrubbing things extreme when things don't want to come off. The thing is, is like this this blue bottle. Uh, it's perfectly fine. It, the label that I had on it came off, no problem. These that had the entire label are wanting to be a little bit more difficult. And as I start to scrub, you can see there's still some goo on them. Um, this one that had one of my homemade labels. So depending on the label, uh, the homemade office label the, or the bottle label, depending on the label, some of these can be more difficult than others to get the last goo off. So now that we've got the water warmed up again, I'm going to add more essential oil. I'm not going to let it cool off. These are just being really difficult. Here I am doing this video going, oh, it's so easy. I like, no, these are being difficult. Difficult, difficult. But you know what? It's taking me a little bit of time and effort, and it's really not a lot of effort. Ooh, chemical. <laughs> uh, what do you call that? Reaction, chemical reaction. It's really not that hard, okay? It's just the, I got called away. It probably needed a little bit more baking soda and vinegar and, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna really make this stronger. This is not, it's orange. It's safe to use topically. It's diluted in some water. Okay, so I could throw these away 
and order new bottles. Bottles aren't that expensive. And if you're just starting out and you need to order some bottles, order some bottles. I, I order bottles all the time for when I'm using for making herbal remedies or bought flower blends or um, when we went on our boot camp and we had to have fresh bottles. I wasn't gonna use used bottles for the weekend. Okay, so I'm gonna let this sit here just a little bit longer. Set another five minute timer and see what happens now. Okay, so I did the dish soap. I tried using the method of vinegar, baking soda, and uh, orange essential oil. And now I am going to resort to getting my coconut oil out because now what I'm doing is I'm having to, uh, now like this is a, this bottle is sticky. This bottle, it, the, the labels came off. But these other two bottles that have the store-bought label, I'm having, I'm going to create my own oil likened to WD-40 or something like that, where I'm using an oil base, a lipid base to get this off. This one had just a little bit of gooey still on it, just a tiny bit, but that one, that one was good. This one and this one. I am determined. I will not be defeated. So I've got my coconut oil. I've got my Um, essential oil and yeah I'm being very liberal with with this I'm not this is not for topical use this is to get this goo off so let's let that sit do another little bit of cleanup let it sit for another five or ten minutes and see how well that works I will overcome so this little Simple, easy, do it yourself. Get the labels off your bottle, bottle so you can reuse them and clean them video has turned into something else altogether. We are now making our own version of Goo Gone. And I will drop the link to where I got this recipe from someone else. But we're going to use one part coconut oil. So I have my bottle sitting here with the coconut oil and orange sitting on them and they've gotten a little bit looser. I tried the baking soda, um, vinegar and orange, which has done amazingly well for me in other areas. But now I've got to have some scrubbing action. So I'm using two parts baking soda. So that's two tablespoons for this particular recipe one part coconut oil, which I've already put in here, and four drops of orange essential oil. very pasty like and we're just going to take a bit all right the worst offenders are these blue bottles so we're going to take I can I can feel a difference they're starting to <laughs> yay I can feel that difference Woohoo! I was starting to get a little frustrated here because Honestly, I've never had this much issue before. And we, I want to use all natural ingredients and um, safe ingredients, non-harmful ingredients. Oh, yes, that's so much better. I can feel that sticky coming off, coming off. It's finally starting to let go. And so using just coconut oil, baking soda, and you can use lemon, you can use orange, oh, so much better. Now that we've had that little episode inside, um, our bigger episode, let me go clean the outer bottles in the sink. 
get this off and then we'll talk about cleaning the inside and the droppers. Yay, finally. Okay, I just, I went and washed all four bottles. This is one of the blue bottles that was so sticky. And you can see my fingers not getting grip. There's no sticky left at all. So this really worked. This on the fly, do it yourself, Goo Gone, amazing. I'm gonna take this and store it for later use. Should have already done that before. Okay, here we are. We are back. We have clean bottles on the outside. The labels are gone. So now I'm taking my bottles and I'm taking the dropper top and the bottles apart. And I'm taking this. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so here we go. Taking that apart and take that apart. So some of these, that's not, that one's not coming apart. Now look at that one. Let me grab that one. That one is the one that has the herb at the bottom. It's still, can you see that? Here we go. Yeah, it still has, so it's dark. So I don't think I'm going to be able to reuse this one, but we'll see when we use the, uh, when not, we use our little brushes. So what we're doing is we're just taking them apart and we're putting them in warm, sudsy water. Some of them are easier to come apart than others. And if you can't get it apart to clean it, that would be a good clue of, okay, it's, yeah, I can't get that one apart. So that will be one where I just say, I might need to um, buy new droppers, okay? So we're gonna let this sit. Oh, and I have this little uh, roll-on bottle that I want to use. So I'm gonna wash it. Um, and that just comes apart too. We're gonna put that in, go ahead and put the lid in. We're gonna set our timer for five minutes, let them just soak. And then we're gonna come back and we're gonna use our brushes. Okay, so I have an already, as I was getting my jar for my Goo Gone, I found a, an extra dropper. It's new. I, it's not been used, but I'm going to go ahead and put it in here anyway. And I'm going to make, I am going to make, my Southern is coming through. I'm going to make a label for homemade Goo Go. We're going to call it Goo Go. Because man, that Goo would not go. And Goo Gone is a trade name. I'll put that on my bottle. Oh my goodness, look at that. Crooked, crooked, crooked. A little bit, a little neater there. But I've just got my little, my little cosmetic salve jar and I am taking my Goo Gone, Goo Go, Goo Go, Still probably too close to that. I don't, it's a, it's a copycat, all natural. And there we go. And I don't know that I need this, but I do need the lid. lid. There it is at the sink. A little bit more on the back of a spoon. Let's get that in there. Don't want to waste. And what was starting out to be a very frustrating <laughs> event turned into a, hey, now I have some, get some, get the sticky off. Uh, all natural, get the sticky off the labels. I will put a link to the recipe where I've got it. I'll share the recipe, but I wanna put a link to where I found it. Can't remember that right offhand at the moment. Okay, we are thankfully down to the last part of clean, cleaning our bottles. Um, so when I order bottles on Amazon, a lot of times I will get scrubbers with them. So I always save them because finding these things can be really hard. So um, let's see if this will come off yet. No. So I can't even clean this one. So I am going to discard 
this dropper that has that herb tinting the dropper. So I just won't use it. But basically we're just gonna take and we're going to scrub the inside of our bottle. If you want to sanitize them, okay, let's say you do want to sanitize your bottles with, uh, with boiling water, you can put your bottles in boiling water for 10, 15 minutes to sanitize them. If you're doing brand new bottles or bottles that just had um, like box flower remedies where all it is is water, then there's nothing in there to cause you to need to sanitize them. So that's just doing that. Um, so let's do the smaller for the small bottle. And then, okay. All right, so now that I have let these sit and soak, I am going to take these and rinse them really well and let them dry. And then they'll be ready for me to reuse for personal use. If I'm using this for a weekend event at an herbal boot camp, or if I'm using for clients, I don't use used bottles. I use brand new bottles that have also been washed, but um, I, I don't use, I don't have a problem reusing bottles for me and my family. Okay, so I have thoroughly washed and rinsed these bottles and they need to sit and dry and I will probably have to take these and set them up somewhere else because you know what it would be a really good idea is those bottle mats that, that, that look like grass nowadays. But what I'll do is I will set these up to dry and once they are dry, they will be ready to reuse the dropper tops that didn't work out, that I wasn't able to clean correctly, I will replace with new droppers. But at least I'm not throwing these precious bottles in the trash and in our landfills. So hold on to your bottles wash them, reuse them, make your own goo-go. It's really easy to do. And I love recycling and reusing the things that I have. So thanks for joining me on this long adventurous episode. Please be sure to share any comments you have of, have you tried this yourself? Do you have any hints or tips that work for you? If you make your own goo-go, let me know how you like it because man, that was so easy and I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.